So the talk is about privacy, uh, preserving KYC through ring signatures. Um, and we'll go through sort of like the basics of ring signatures and I'll, I'll explain some primitives because they're a bit un, uh, unintuitive if you haven't, if you're not aware of like the basic operations um, and you know why would we would want, uh, like why would we apply into KYC? Which basically is, this is the theme of this talk is more, you know, you can use fun crypto that isn't always just about payments. You know, you can, you can, you like, you can use it more generally to uh, make smart contracts more valuable. Um, yeah, go on. Cool, and uh, yeah, the, the agenda is just motivation, again, why, why we need this, the crypto crash course, um, which is gonna explain a bit about what the curves, and another crypto crash course that's gonna explain rig signature crypto, and then the actual ring scheme. So like, what even, what even is privacy preserving KYC? <laughs> the, uh, in KYC, uh, or uh, anti well, uh, KYC stands for New Year Customer, or uh, in all, more generally, anti money laundering regulation, you only really care about what that the purchaser, er, that the purchaser is allowed to participate in the transaction, right? Um, we don't care what they do beyond that, especially not on Ethereum. Like if I'm raising money for a crowd sale, I only really care what the guy does when he buys my token. I don't care what he does beyond buying my token, right? Um, so I just I want to be I want to say to the SEC or whatever, uh, whichever regulatory entity lives in your country. Look, I, I, I knew who, I know I did the validation for everybody who bought it, but like you don't have to, pr you don't have to give them the whole transaction chain. And you know, the analogy is, is you know, your bank, account, your bank needs to know who you are when you do, when you open, have an account with them. But if I withdraw money from my bank account, I don't have to tell my bank, I, pay, you know, I used this $5 at Pret on Tuesday, right? Um, like all, all they care is that custodian relationship and it's the same thing in, in uh, for ICOs. So, Currently, your, uh, knowing your KYC address on chain associates your name with all the on chain actions you perform, which is not ideal. Um, and it, yeah, it doesn't have to be the case, um, you know, like as we can see through the ring signatures. And, but you can still sort of provide um, the requirements of KYC, just not leaking like an entire transaction and action history to your KYC. -er. So let's go through uh, ring signatures and you know what they are and, and the history kind of. So the concept was first introduced in a paper titled How to Leak a Secret by the RSA authors. Yep. The, uh, it concerns using keys in a group instead of using them individually to prove you have a private key from the group as opposed to proving ownership of a specific key. Normally in a normal ring signature, sorry, normal signatures, uh, if I, create a signature, well, we have no more public key crypto. Uh, if I create a signature from my pair, then I, you know, I basically said, you know, this signature is from me and there's just no, there's no other way about it, you know, because that signature can only be created by that specific pair and I publish the public key. Um, instead in rig signatures, there are over a ring or group of keys. So it says, I, uh, I am one of the keys in this ring but I don't know, I can't, I'm not gonna tell you, it doesn't reveal which key specifically, right? So if key A belongs to Matthew and key B belongs to Alice, is the signature for, or the ring says either Matthew or Alice signed. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, useful for example for blowing. If each public key in the group belongs to a government official, the official can leak some classified data proving that they are indeed a government official without outing themselves individually as the whistleblower, um, you know, which is, like, which, which is like kind of why the scheme was introduced in the first place as titled by the paper, How to Leak a Secret. Um, so ring signatures are a type of zero knowledge proof. Um, and zero knowledge proofs really just means it should be, it should really be, ter be termed one knowledge proof because it doesn't prove nothing. It just proves one thing and nothing other than that. Uh, but you know, I guess zero knowledge is more catchy. But zero knowledge proofs, yeah, like allow you to do that without revealing anything at about anything else other than the scheme you're trying to reveal. A simple analogy, um, that's probably the most understandable for zero knowledge proofs, would be if I choose a card from a deck of cards and I want to prove to you that it's a red card, if I just show you the card, it reveals more than the color, it reveals the suit and the number and so on, obviously I just revealed everything, that would be like revealing my private key. Um, if on the other hand, I just take my card aside, you know, like face down on the table, and I flip up all the 24 or 26 black cards uh, that are in a deck, 
there are no more, and, and assuming that there are no more black cards, you know, assuming it's a normal deck and the crypto protocols enforces that you pick the normal deck or, you know, I can just, I don't know, use, use a new deck. Uh, it proves that the card that I set aside is right. And specifically the zero knowledge proof in Rings Industries is called zero knowledge proof of set membership because I'm proving I'm a member in the set of keys and I prove nothing else other than that. My signature does not associate my, does not associate me, the party providing the signature with a specific key in the ring. Um, so, you know, like, like some zero knowledge stuff in practice, um, elliptic curves um, are used for a lot of zero knowledge uh, schemes and their elliptic curves form an abelian group. What that means is we can form additions and publications on the, on the public key without destroying its relation to the private key. Or more strictly, we're able to perform morphisms which maintain group structure, which is harder to do on RSA uh, because it's got different, it's basically just different crypto. Um, so the security on R in RSA, if like, you know, that's probably the most commonly known uh, public key crypto system because it's been around the longest, you know, just based on uh, factoring large numbers. Um, so it's, you know, like very, very, very large co-primes on the modulus groups. Um, and that's a bit of a different security model. It works slightly differently, but security elliptic curves is based on this trivial algorithm problem. Uh, meaning, given uh, y, that is the result of g to the power of x, it's hard to recover x, the private key. And by hard, we mean like strictly computationally hard. There's, a, there's quite a, a strict definition for this. It's, you know, like the, the security, the space needs to be 200, 200 or at least 128 bits because um, then, in, you know, brute forcing it takes more energy than the sun gives him, uh, gives him the lifetime of the universe, universe and whatever. But uh, anyway, so remember in both RSA and, and elliptic curves, we deal with integers on modular groups, meaning operations wrap around, you know, like it's clock arithmetic. So you have 14 plus 12, uh, modulus 24 is two because 14 plus 12 is 26. And then it's basically, you know, uh, the, the result of that operation uh, divided by 24 and then you have the remainder. So that's well, how most of this works. And so the group elements in elliptic curves are points. So for example, the pair of, the pair of numbers, 54, 243, because it's a two dimensional field. Um, the private keys are scalars or integers from the underlying field. 256 bit elliptic curve keys gave equivalent security to 3072 bit RSA keys. So they're much faster, much more compact, um, which is it's also kind of one of the reasons um, you know, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum are more possible today because if you had to use RSA to do or aggregate, uh, you know, like uh, um, verifications of transactions in the block, it, you know, the blockchains would be all, they would all be like terabytes in size right now. Um, and they have nice homomorphism. So if the private key, uh, take the private key X and the public key G to the X, then the private key of the public key times K to the X is X times K, w you know, but whatever, that's more, uh, deeper math that is relevant later. Um, so as a concrete example of zero knowledge proofs or people who can follow this math at this level, we can take Schnorr signatures. They provide zero knowledge proof of knowledge of the exponent, right? So that basically, that's in elliptic curves anyway, that's equivalent to proving knowledge of the private key because in elliptic curves, you know, the discrete logarithm problem prevents you from knowing the exponent from, a, from an exponential answer result. Again, that's why it's a logarithm, but it's discrete because it, you know you don't have decimals. Um, this means that a signature reveals nothing at all about, about the private key and does not provide an attacker any information for brute force. Um, well, for anything other than you know ab complete full state brute force. Um, so the you know like a, a little diagram um, for the non for the interactive version of Schnorr um, is as follows. You know the Prover um, takes has a private key x, right? And the verifier prior to the uh, protocol has the public key g to the x. Then I, as the prover, to pick a random w, the witness value, or, or the initial commitment, uh, depending on the papers you read. Um, and I compute g to, the g to the power of w, and I have w my public commitment. I send that to Alice. Alice takes that, acknowledges it, to, uh, sends me a, a random, she picks a random number, c, and uh, sends me that and that's a challenge. And then I take, I compute R by taking W and subtracting C times X um, by it and modulus, modul modulus that by Q because that's the order of the group. 
Um, then I send that uh, to Alice, and Alice takes R, uh, goes g to, g to the R times uh, public key uh, to the power of the challenge, and that equals W. And uh, the algebraic proof of that, again, if, as, uh, for people who care to follow, is that if you take g to the r and times that by the public key to the power of c, um, that equals w. Just because of the math, because if you do, if you do like, the expansion, uh, g, to the, uh, g to the r is just g to the w minus xc times g to the xc, because again, g to the public key is just c to the x, and then uh, raise that to the power of c, and that's just laws of exponents in, in, in fields. Uh, and then you get g to the w, and that cancels out. So only if you have x, can you provide an R that cancels this out? And in the uh, non-interactive version, which is like, which is how Schnorr signature actually works, actually work, you take, um, you force causality by using a hash function because if you don't force a verifier to commit to W before C, then the verifier can just forge proofs at random um, and then hashes just, just disable that. Anyway, so this is the, the very, the simplest possible signature of relative terrors. And that's, uh, you know, this, this structure is what's used in, in rigid signatures. Um, yeah, actually, we'll not go into this one, but uh, <laughs> 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 let's just skip this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, here's a bit of, here's a bit more pseudocody again for those who care. No, no, go back. <laughs> I'll go through this real quick. Here's a, here's a bit more pseudocody for those uh, who care to follow. Um, you know, if you, if you look at, um, yeah, if you look at uh, the uh, things highlighted in the green and the pink uh, and the blue, that has a very similar structure to the Schnorr signature that we just saw. And that T0 equals R minus CX is basically another way of saying, you know, blah, you know R equals W minus CX, right? That, that structure is the same. That's the real zero, that's the zero proof you need. Um, in the ring signature, basically, exploits the fact that if you don't, for, if you don't force causality, um, you can forge proofs. And really, the ring signature follows a process such that if you have, there's 10 people in your ring, you forge nine of the proofs. And um, like you cons the protocol is just constructed in such a way that you must have at least one of the keys such that the forge forged proofs loop back into something that's verified into your knowledge. That's a bit, you know, like going beyond that is a bit too difficult, but like basically that's it. So, you know, it, it, it exploits that zero knowledge um, step and, and extends it to like um, a set instead of a single element. Um, and that's, you know, whatever. I don't know, take a picture and read it at home if you want. Um, <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> um, so with the addition of some math, um, so, you know, the math that we saw later, the earlier, we can make our ring signature scheme allow us to check if somebody has signed twice, but still never know who exactly signed. Um, this now becomes useful for more than leaking a secret. For a specific message, we can ascertain that one and only one member in the group signed the message, and we do this um, using the, the, the signing tag that, like, again, you know, just relies on discrete logic problem and reversing that problem. Um, so this allows us to use the scheme for fun things like anonymous voting, private transactions, and whatever, but we can use it for the topic of this talk, privacy preserving uh, know your customer. So, you know, the interactions is the user has a private key to one of the public keys in the ring R, and the, like the on contract on chain would have, hmm, okay, yeah, contract on chain would have um, a ring R consisting of the public keys uh, set, you know, PK1 to PKN, and uh, like for a current epoch, a message assigned is M because the, the signature is specific over the ring message pair. So the message assigned could just be like, you know, sign your KYC for January. Um, yeah, so the user generates a signature um, sigma over, you know, the ring and message pair, sends that to the, to the server or the contract with the, with the action requested. The contract replies with uh, success, computes unique tag from the signature and accepts. The user generates another sig signature, sigma um, sub two over, so the, like if the same user generates another sigma, uh, signature, sigma sub two um, over, or, over the same ring message pair and sends it to the uh, server of the contract, uh, the contract uh, detects the tag and the signature the same and, and rejects. So there's a, there's, a, there's a tag that because of the way that elliptic curves work, you can always compute to be the same without leaking 
which key was it? It was that was the same. So the like in in, pre in the sort of setup phase, um, this is kind of like how the network could be architected. Um, you know, you have your participants uh, like Alice, Bob, Sarah, whatever, um, and you have you can have multiple uh, KYC authorities or registration authorities um, like that maintain you know a KYC services where they need to see your passport or I don't know you go there in person or something whatever depends on your security level you can use off chain communication through something like whisper or you know e it can be as simple as just setting up a website where I can just submit a key um, uh, the authorities aggregate public keys um, and of course if I signed up to an authority with so say I'm like you know I'm saying I'm signing up Matt wants to participate in the polka dot sale um, and here's Matt's public key um, to submit into the KYC ring, uh, you know it'll take that and aggregate all those all those public keys, and then uh, once the aggregation period is over, let's say that that's like a week prior to the crowd seal or something, the, author the authorities send a the set of public keys that they aggregated plus a message saying you know these keys are um, KYC'd to participate in the polka dot sale or to participate into a sale up to like a million dollars in terms of contribution, right? It doesn't matter, like you can parameterize it quite um, abstractly. And then the KYC ring smart contract, basically uh, you can, it's basically modeled as um, kind of, it's kind of like an ERC20 token, but that's non-transferable. Um, so when you have a, like on the other, s on, on a completely separate interaction set, um, I, like if I, so if I submitted my public key to the, to the um, authority, and the authority submits it uh, at the aggregates of the contract. Because of the how the ring signatures work, when I go and if I, you know, if, if when I go and I'm still the same person, you know, like the parity authority knows that it was me, but when I go and withdraw the, uh, the, the, the KYC token to mark my withdraw that address, so KYC user as a KYC address, the signature that I generated um, is indistinguishable from any other signature of a p party in the same ring, right? So even though, par even though like the authorities or the, or the blockchain knows that the person who just provided, or the address, say that we have address A, the address A that provided the signature to the smart contract to register them as a KYC address participated in the K parity author um, KYC authority process, they don't know who it was, right? So uh, you would see KYC user and then KYC user prime or, or apostrophe or whatever. So KYC user one could be Alice, Bob, or Sarah, and KYC user prime could be Alice, Bob, or Sarah. Their two signatures are different, but because of the general knowledge proof, they are indistinguishable from each other. Um, and you know, it's a bit, if you don't understand the math, it's a bit unintuitive, but you know, like, doesn't matter who knows, doesn't matter if, um, like the, the, the little process in the beginning as that's read, that could technically also be done on chain. I could, I could, there could be a contract on the main chain that says Matthew has public key one, but when I go to withdraw it, to withdraw the uh, KYC token from a random address, um, no one would know anything other than Matthew could be one of the three parties in the, uh, in the KYC process, right? So magic of elliptic curves. <laughs> and yeah, so I mean like on the conclusions, um, so we addressed this validator there with the KYC ring, and we suffer less loss of privacy is all you need to know. All you know is the address isn't a set of, um, you know, know your customer addresses. Uh, we enable a protocol for different KYC types, even for the same set of keys. So in the same ring, you can say, look, um, you know, I one, one to like, we have a one-time ability to do a 1K transfer, a one-time ability to do a 10K transfer. As long as they sign over different messages, the ring can be the same. Um, if we, yeah, and like you can, you know, you can't, you can't distinguish signatures across message sets. Um, the KYC process can be permissionless up to the service provider, which KYC ring they choose to trust. Like in the shape just example uh, that I detailed before, um, you know, you, you can have sort of like a decentralized network of these KYC providers and perhaps certain KYC providers uh, can earn reputation um, because they, have do, they do proper due diligence and you know, that can be, it can, there can be a market for KYCing if you, if you wanted to. 
And it only requires one off-chain step to submit the keys to the uh, KYC validators. Um, the rest can all be done on-chain. On well, in, t in theory, um, you can do that on-chain as well. So it doesn't require off-chain steps at all, but it's just, uh, it's just like much cheaper to do it off-chain. And so uh, like this contract mostly exists already. Um, it's uh, on Ethereum. This is possible now because um, we uh, well, we added the uh, some elliptic curve op codes. You don't lead, you don't actually need bilinear pairings for this, but you know the the contract implementation uses, uses alt, uh, well BN two fifty six because it's the only curve available and it's a bilinear pairings curve. But bilinear pairings curves can be used just like non bilinear pairings curve. You use the right group. Um, and I've, I'm having someone audit the contract, and so this will be deployed on the main and on the main net soon, and. And then you and people will be able to use it for you know arbitrary KYC process. Cool. Thanks.